In this video, we're going to review the rules for multiplying and dividing with integers, or uh, multiplying or dividing with positive and negative numbers in general. Uh, multiplying and dividing, in all cases, ends up being a lot easier than addition and subtraction. All that we want to do is, if, it, if it's a multiplication problem, we're always going to multiply, and if it's a division problem, we're always going to divide. So just pay attention to what there is doing there. We don't have to decide, am I going to do one thing or another? What we do want to decide, however, is what the sign of my final answer is. If I am multiplying or dividing two things that have the same sign, that my answer is always going to end up being positive. And if I'm going to multiply or divide two things with different signs, then my answer is always going to be negative. So let's take a look at problem number nine here. So for number nine, we have three times negative two. It's a multiplication problem, so we go ahead and multiply the numbers. Three times two gives me six. And when I go to decide what my answer is, it was a positive times a negative. Different signs mean my answer is negative. So my solution to three times negative two is negative six. Now, when we're talking about multiplication symbols, I do want to point out that we often, or we have different ways that we can show that something means multiplication. In problem number nine, we have kind of the traditional x that's used. However, that's not very it's not a very good notation when we start getting into algebra and we use where we use letters and variables. So some other ways that you may see multiplication denoted, and I use these all interchangeably throughout the quarter. Sometimes we use an asterisk. That's a convenient way when we're working on the computer to use multiplication. Sometimes you'll see two numbers next to each other um, separated by parentheses. So because there's a parentheses here and the two is touching it, that means two times whatever it is that comes next. And sometimes we just use a dot like this, and that is another way that we can indicate that we're using multiplication. So now that we kind of know that 10 and 11 and 12 are all multiplication, let's just go through. We multiply, same sign as positive, different signs as negative. So here, negative three times negative six is gonna give us 18. And because my signs were the same, that negative times a negative makes it positive 18. Next here, two times seven is 14. A positive number times a negative number, different signs, so my solution is negative, and I get negative 14 as an answer. For number 12 here, 3 times 15 is 45. A positive times a positive, same sign, my answer ends up being positive. Now, the rules for division are exactly the same, so it does actually keep this a lot easier. Um, all we do, same deal. This time we're going to divide the two numbers. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4 and then go back and, make, and uh, check to see the sign of your answer. Negative divided by a negative, same signs, so my answer ends up being positive, and positive four is my solution. Sometimes, especially when we're dealing with computers, the division sign is kind of hard to find. So a lot of times we'll see the slash button like this, this and that's just another way to show that I'm going to be dividing in order to get my answer. Here we go ahead and do six divided by two gives me three, and then a negative divided by a positive, different signs, so my answer ends up being negative, and my solution there is negative three. Yet another way that we see division sometimes, it looks just like this. It looks kind of like a fraction bar, and in fact, fraction bars do mean divide. So sometimes you'll see a problem like this. Just make sure you know that that means divide, and then we follow the same rules again. 72 divided by nine is eight. A positive divided by a negative, different signs, so my answer ends up being negative, and that gives me negative eight as a solution. For the last problem here, we have 100 divided by 10 is 10. A negative divided by a negative, signs are the same, so my answer ends up being positive. Awesome. Okay, so when we get down to exponents, remember uh, here we have a number being taken to a power. And the reason that I included exponent, not exponent notation here in this in this video was because an exponent is just a way to do repeated multiplication. This number down here at the bottom is what we call the base and this um, number up here at the top is what's called the exponent or power. So when we go through, if we see five to the second power, what that means is we wanna do five and times it by itself two times in my solution. So five to the second power means five times five. I multiply my numbers together and they were both positive, so my final resulting answer is positive. Now you do have to be a little bit careful when you're dealing with positive and negative numbers when we're dealing with powers. 
Here, in this example, problem number 18 and 19, notice, look very, very similar, but they're actually very different and get completely different solutions. In this case, notice that what's being squared, when we look in front of that squared symbol, you see the parentheses. What that means is that everything inside the parentheses has to get multiplied by itself. So in this case, the negative 5 has to be multiplied by another negative 5 because all of that negative 5 is being squared. Now, when I do negative 5 times negative 5, I multiply my values to get 25. The signs are the same, so my answer ends up being positive because a negative times a negative makes it positive. Okay. Now, how is that different than number 19? Well, in number 19, when we look just in front of the squared, the only thing there is a 5, not the parentheses. So here, the parentheses told us that we had to square everything that was inside. Here, only the 5 is in front of the squared. So the way our order of operations work is that the 5 gets multiplied by itself, so it's 5 times 5, but not the negative. So the negative just stays out in front. So if I were going to figure this problem out, I would want to do negative 5 times 5. 5 times 5 gives me 25. And here, notice that the signs are different. We have a negative 5 and a positive 5, so that results in a negative 25. So we actually get a completely different solution here. So watch for the parentheses. The parentheses mean to square everything, including the sign. If the negative is not in parentheses, it does not get squared. So it's a really important point to keep in mind as you go through with these problems. Now, sometimes we're going to get things like this, negative 5 to the third power. All the same rules apply. Look at what comes in front of the in front of the power, in this case it's the parentheses, that means that all of the negative 5 is getting what we here cubed or taken to the third power. So what does this mean? In this case it means that it's going to be negative 5 times because the negative was in the parentheses, we need a negative 5 there, and then we need another negative 5 to wrap it up. So this would be what our final write-up is here. Now let's go through and do it. Remember when we're doing multiplications or divisions, we just do the one at a time from left to right. So here you do the negative 5 times the negative 5, which would get me a positive 25 because the signs were the same. And then we can go on and multiply that resulting answer by another negative 5. In this case, 25 times 5 gives me 125. A positive times a negative will result in a negative 125 when we take all of negative 5 to the third power.